New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu has been um, overseeing the removal of of Confederate monuments in New Orleans. I think they're up to like three or four now, and they've had to do this at night um, with uh, with guards because of concerns that some people want to keep uh, these uh, monuments to uh, these, um, you know, treasonous folk uh, in their, uh, their midst. But here is um, Mitch Landrieu very eloquently uh, defending the removal of these uh, monuments. So about why we chose to remove these four monuments to the lost cause of the Confederacy, but also how and why this process can move us towards healing and understanding each other. It is self-evident that these men did not fight for the United States of America. They fought against it. They may have been warriors, but in this cause, they were not patriots. These statutes are not just stone and metal. They're not just innocent remembrances of a benign history. These monuments celebrate a fictional sanitized Confederacy, ignoring the death, ignoring the enslavement, ignoring the terror that it actually stood for. And after the Civil War, these monuments were part of that terrorism, as much as burning a cross on someone's lawn. They were erected purposefully to send a strong message to all who walked in the shadows about who was still in charge in this city. Another friend asked me to consider these four monuments from the perspective of an African-American mother or father trying to explain to their fifth grade daughter why Robert E. Lee sat atop of our city. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you look into the eyes of this young girl and convince her that Robert E. Lee is there to encourage her? Do you think that she feels inspired and hopeful by that story? Do these monuments help her see her future with limitless potential? Have you ever thought, have you ever thought that if her potential is limited, yours and my potential, my limited potential as well? We all know the answers to these very simple questions. When you look into this child's eyes is the moment when the searing truth comes into focus. This is the moment when we know what we must do, when we know what is right. I mean, that's, that's it. pretty impressive. Good for him. That's great. Um, let's that, just go the, over. That was very, the beginning would be very offensive to the wrongheaded people who come out to uh, protest during the monuments being taken down. And I would imagine. It's a dangerous thing to say. I mean, it's. Good for him, but I wonder what the aim is literally. politically for him. I mean, it makes sense in the city. I mean, I, in New Orleans as mayor, I could see that. But if he wants to go statewide, that's probably still a really tricky proposition. It is possible yeah. he just wanted to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, it is possible, <laughs> Sam. No, I think it's 70, 80 percent the right thing. I'm just wondering because he's someone who's been floated for even running for president, which I think is a major uh, stretch. But I, I mean, it's just interesting how it fits in. I don't know. It's not like, um, you know, Democrats are going to take Louisiana uh, and the presidency anytime soon. That is the truth. But if he ran for the Senate talking like that, that would be an interesting race. Probably wouldn't work, but it would be interesting. Uh, hey, Sam Cedar here. Uh, folks, you probably heard about the whole uh, YouTube uh, advertiser apocalypse. Well, we're suffering from it, too. We need your help. If you want to keep this show alive, you want us uh, to be able to still put out uh, clips on a regular basis, head over to our Patreon page. Here's the link right here or down below there. And uh, just give us a couple bucks a month uh, and support this program. Really appreciate it.